And now on to our dinosaur of the day, Sora Poseidon slash Paluxysaurus, which was a request from the Dark Moo, Dino Row, and Dinosaur4602 all via YouTube, so thanks. If this is a complicated story, so I'm going to start <laughs> with Sora Poseidon first. Sora Poseidon, the name means earthquake god lizard. It was named after the Greek god Poseidon, who's associated with earthquakes. It lived in the Cretaceous in what is now the U.S., it was a sauropod. Fossils and tracks have been found in Oklahoma, Wyoming, and Texas. And it was described in 2000 by Wadel, Cefeli, and Sanders. The holotype was found in 1994 at the Antlers Formation by Bob Cross, who's a dog trainer. And Dr. Richard Cefeli and a team from the Oklahoma Museum of Natural History excavated it later that year. The first sauroposidin fossils described were four neck vertebrae found in Oklahoma near the Texas border, and each vertebrae was really long. The longest one was 4.6 feet or 1.4 meters. Oof. Yeah, and the vertebrae have these tiny air cells and are thin, which is what made the neck lighter and easier to lift. And made room for those sweet, sweet air sacs. Exactly. But... Since these were so large, at first, they thought that the fossils were too large for any animal and were instead tree trunks. <laughs> but, in fact, they're actually the longest known dinosaur neck vertebrae bones. <laughs> cool. So Matt Wadel, who was then a grad student, and we actually interviewed him in a previous episode all about sauropods, he analyzed the vertebrae in 1999 and realized that no, these aren't tree trunks. <laughs> so they sent out a press release, and it got a lot of media attention, which led to a lot of inaccurate headlines of the largest dinosaur ever. <laughs> it was probably the tallest known, but it's definitely not the longest or heaviest, especially now. Yeah. But anyway, Wadel said, quote, Sora Poseidon was an unexpected discovery because it was a huge, gas-guzzling barge of an animal in an age of subcompact sauropods, <laughs> <end> quote. <laughs> Not many sauropods have been found in North America from the early Cretaceous, and most of them were shrinking in size, so that made Sauroposidon stand out. The type species is Sauroposidon protellus, and Sauroposidon was so large that the ground probably shook when it walked, so protellus means perfect before the end in ancient Greek. It refers to Sauroposidon being the last most specialized sauropod known in North America from the early Cretaceous. It was originally thought to be a brachiosaurid and closely related to Brachiosaurus and Giraffa Titan. So Sauroposan's size is based on comparisons with vertebrae from the Giraffa Titan specimen in Berlin's Natural History Museum, which is the most complete known Brachiosaur, even though it's a composite. So Sauroposan is estimated to be, from what I could find, 112 feet or 34 meters long and weighing about 50 to 60 tons. It could reach up to 59 feet or 18 meters high with its neck extended. So that means it probably ate from the tops of trees. Its neck is estimated to be 37 to 39 feet or 11 to 12 meters long based on the assumption that it has the same proportions as Giraffa Titan. Hmm. But it had a more gracile neck than Giraffa Titan. And if the rest of its body is just as slender, then it might have weighed less, especially if it had an air sac system, as Garrett was talking about. Yeah, it sounds like it did if they found pneumaticity in the vertebrae. Mm-hmm. So the fossils found in Oklahoma show that it lived in an environment similar to modern-day Louisiana, humid with river deltas, bayous, and lagoons. And now I'll move on to Paluxysaurus. So there were Paluxysaurus specimens from the Twin Mountains Formation in Texas, including a partial skull and tracks that were previously named Paluxysaurus jones Eye and are now considered to be a junior synonym of Sauroposidon. And they were reclassified in 2012 after a reanalysis by Michael Demick and Brady Foreman. So Demick and Foreman also reclassified additional specimens found in the cloverleaf formation in Wyoming as Sauroposidon. And these show Sauroposidon may be more closely related to titanosaurs than brachiosaurids. Hmm. At least seven individuals have been found between Texas, the Twin Mountains Formation, Oklahoma, the Antlers Formation, and Wyoming, the cloverleaf formation. These all now considered sauroposidin specimens. The so Demic and Foreman suggested that sauropods from the cloverleaf formation were referable to sauroposidin based on shared derived characters of a juvenile cervical and the sauroposidin holotype, and that Paluxysaurus from Twin Mountains formation was not distinguishable from the cloverleaf sauropod and had the same characteristics as the cloverleaf sauropod, which makes Paluxysaurus a junior synonym. 
There's also tracks that have been found, and some paleontologists think that the footprints from the bed of the Polexi River in Texas are of an acrocanthosaurus stalking a sauroposeidon. Ooh. So now sauroposeidon is thought to be a basal samphospondyl titanosauriform instead of a brachiosaurid, which makes sense because it had some similar features and other basal Samphospondyles, such as Erkatu and Chiawanlong, have similar cervicals to Sauroposeidon. So that mixes up our whole idea about comparing it to Giraffatitan. Yes. And Matt Wadle has accepted all of this in one of his blog posts on Sauropod Vertebrate Picture of the Week. He seemed pretty thrilled that people were working on this and figuring it out, so that's cool. It's always cool when more dinosaurs get added to the one that you named. Mm-hmm. <laughs> So let's go back to Polexisaurus for a minute. Before becoming a synonym to Sauroposeidon, Polexisaurus was actually mixed up with another sauropod, Pleurocelis, which just adds more complication. So Pleurocelis was found in Maryland in the late 1800s, and the bones found in Texas were thought to be the same dinosaur the, when Polexisaurus bones were found and described in 1974 by Juan Langston Jr., only Pleurocelis was known from North America from the early Cretaceous, so they grouped them together. Hmm. Pleurocelis was named in 1888 by Charles Marsh. Its name means hollow-sided, and it lived in the Cretaceous. It's not well known, only by partial skull and postcranial bones, and it actually may be a synonym of astrodon. So Polexisaurus, then Pleurocelis, was found in a bone bed in the mid-1980s by students from the University of Texas at Austin, but work stopped on it in 1987, and the quarry didn't reopen until 1993. All of the sauropods in that bone bed looked to be the same genus. And they found a partial skull, including teeth, a partial neck, vertebrae from the back and tail, limb, and girdle bones. There were four individuals found in that bone bed, and they think that the bone bed may have been due to a flood, especially since petrified logs were found there, so they may have been washed down river. Plural Celis became... <laughs> the official Texas state dinosaur in 1997. But then in 2007, Peter Rose and others named the bones found in Twin Mountains Formation in Texas Polexisaurus Jonesi. And Polexisaurus, as you may have guessed, means Polexi River Lizard. And Polexisaurus Jonesi was named for the town of Polexi and the Polexi River, which are near the Jones Ranch site where the fossils were found. Uh Uh-oh. Yes. So then in 2009, Texas passed a resolution to amend the state dinosaur name to Polexisaurus Jones Eye. And Fort Worth Museum of Science and History celebrated the name change by creating a full restoration of Polexisaurus, and it was a composite of all four specimens. Cool. So I've since looked up the current Texas state dinosaur, and it's still listed as Polexisaurus, even, even though it's a junior synonym of Sauroposeidon. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> What's interesting is initially Polexisaurus was thought to be similar looking to Brachiosaurus, but the reconstruction gave a lot of insights. So they found 60 to 70% of the bones needed to reconstruct Polexisaurus. And they found it had slim teeth, which it would have used to grab food, and it was built light. It had a long neck and tail that was nearly as long, as well as long front limbs, which made its back more level. And it had wide hips and a high shoulder. And also the estimates were a little bit different from the ones they found for Sauroposeidon, about 70 feet or 21 meters long and weighing up to 20 tons. Also, these dinosaurs lived in a semi-arid environment. But anyway, full-grown adult Sauroposeidon would have probably been safe from predators, but juveniles may have been prey for Acrocanthosaurus or Deinonychus or a Utah raptor. And other dinosaurs that lived in the same time and place include the Sauropod Astrodon, (laughs) <laughs> just adding to the confusion and the ornithopod tenontosaurus and other animals included amphibians reptiles fish crocodilians turtles and early mammals so long story short there's a dinosaur it was originally called pleurocelis then it got renamed to paluxisaurus and finally that one was synonymized with the previously existing sauroposeidon Yes, but the Texas state dinosaur is still Paluxisaurus. I wonder if Texas will ever rename that because Paluxy is, you know, so Texan. Yeah. That now that it's this dinosaur that's from all sorts of different places, not even originally named from Texas, makes it a lot less exciting for them. 
Yeah, I don't know. Maybe Oklahoma should make their dinosaur a Sora Poseidon. <laughs> <laughs> they can battle it out. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. 